All right. Changes galore for the New England Patriots. A lot of veteran players leaving in free agency. The biggest name, obviously, Jamie Collins. I mean, Tom Brady, now a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Matthew Mm -hmm. Slater, who has been a fixture for that organization for years, special teams captain. He made it clear yesterday in a conference call with the media, the standard doesn't change at all. The pillars we stand upon, they don't change. We have to go into the season expecting more from ourselves than anyone else in the building or outside the building expects from us. If we don't, you shouldn't even step foot in the building because we're already going to be beat. You have been in that building. You have lived in that environment. And I think, Chris, you can attest to the fact that regardless of who the players are, that's the attitude that's been baked in by Bill Belichick over the years, and it's not going to change. No, it's not. The band will keep marching on. I mean, I, listen, I, I really would expect that there's not even a reference to Tom Brady you know, if and when, whenever that happens, you have your first team meeting in New England. They're going to go forward as planned. They're going to hold Jared Stidham as the starting quarterback of the New England Patriots to a standard in practice as higher, higher than Tom Brady. They're going to expect the practice to function at that very same level it did when Brady was there. So there's going to be no excuses. They don't bat an eye in New England, and they have the supreme confidence in their system, their coaching staff, the way of life and how the players like Matthew Slater and others there that really understand the culture on a day-to-day basis, that that is going to help them win games, let alone how we talk about their coaches being brilliant. And I think they outcompete a lot of coaches in football on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, even in the off season. So there's still a lot of greatness to be had there in the New England organization. One of the things you said in the aftermath of Tom Brady's selection of the Buccaneers that continues to resonate with me, the idea that some teams may have shied away from Tom Brady because they didn't want to become exposed as to how poorly they compare to an organization like the Patriots when Tom Brady shows up and realizes, man, now I know why you stink. Now I know why you don't compete for championships because this organization, this building is nothing like the building that Bill Belichick has built in New England. No, it's just a, it's not a dip, dip your toe in the water to gauge the temperature type organization. No, it's just jump in and let's go. It's time to go. You know, I can remember just even with Josh McDaniels, who's a little bit of a mini me to Bill Belichick. You know, we had our first day of practice with the Denver Broncos. You think, hey, we're going to go out there. We're going to wear helmets. We'll get a little used to the, you know, the football and moving around. Nope, he wanted us to wear our shoulder pads. Hey, you might as well put them on. You're going to have to throw with them anyways. Start wearing them from day one. It's just it's an organization that's so detailed, so buttoned up, uh, has a purpose and a plan on a daily basis. They maximize their days with, you know, an unbelievable ability to – Uh, really, you know, just fit a lot in as far as work, classroom study. Uh, They're very efficient that way to make the most of their time too, let alone their coaches will sleep in the facility or work 20 hours a day and be at the facility and go home for just a little while. So, and I think this is an organization and a coaching staff that will be motivated by the fact that Brady's not there, just like Brady's going to want to stick to the Patriots. I think the Patriots are going to want to show the world too that, hey, We're not just some one-player, one-trick pony here. We can do it without even the great Tom Brady. And the options at quarterback for now are second-year fourth-rounder from 2019, Jared Stidham, Brian Hoyer, who is back for his third stint with the Patriots, also Cody Kessler on the depth chart, plus whoever else they may happen to acquire as the offseason continues to unfold, whether it's in the draft or free agency. But we've now seen defensive captain Devin McCourty, Defensive Player of the Year for the entire National Football League, Stephon Gilmore, and most recently, Matthew Slater, special teams captain, praising Jarrett Stidham, talking up Jarrett Stidham. And it tells me he's going to be the starter, at least to start the 2020 season, Chris. We've got three different guys, important, influential guys in that locker room who saw what he could do last year in practice. Gilmore talked about how it challenged the defense. It made the defense better. McCourty said the, the same thing. And 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 Slater has been there. You know, when you're a, a special team stalwart, you get to observe a lot. And he's seen a lot. And he's seen things he likes from Stidham. So, you know, it sounds like he's already got the locker room won over before he even has to play a single game as the starter. Well, I, I think they see the potential and the talent there. That's the one thing I heard from the beginning last year. You know, I heard it from some people working up in New England, you know, saw some players who raved about him as well. And I'll stand by what I said again last week, Mike. 
You know, I, Jared Stidham was a first round pick. You know, he was one of those guys that slipped through the crack because the team fell apart at Auburn and we all blame the quarterback and it had nothing to do with the quarterback. New England is amazing at evaluating the quarterback position and they have a certain style in which they look for. That's why they hit a home run with Tom Brady, you know, in the sixth round because they stuck to their formula as far as, you know, bit, height, weight, speed, certain formula as far as what they like at the quarterback position. And they like pure throwers of the football. That's why they take chances on a guy like Ryan Mallett. They drafted Rohan Davey back in the day, if you remember, from LSU, because they want guys to go, man, we want to be able to push the ball down or have a quarterback that will stand in the pocket and throw rifles all over the field. Stidham can do that. Stidham really reminds me as a player, Mike, my comparison to him was Tony Romo. I thought he was a stronger arm Tony Romo when I watched him at Auburn. I'm not a, uh, surprised to hear the praise for him. You know, I've been hearing it, and I saw it on film when I watched him and evaluated him coming out of the draft. I think he's, he's got a chance to be a, a, a longtime starting quarterback in the NFL. Doesn't it strike you as odd that we have so many Patriots players who are going out of their way to praise Jarrett Stidham? And I say that because I recall Terrence Knighton being on the show after he had spent some time in New England, and he shared the story of how he was complimenting a teammate following a training camp practice, and he got called out in the next team meeting by Bill Belichick right. for doing it. Belichick said, uh, you're not an expert. You're not a D-line expert. We don't need you evaluating guys. I mean, what does Belichick think about McCourty and Slater and Gilmore not doing their jobs, right? It's do your job, and your job isn't go out and praise the quarterback or evaluate the quarterback's potential performance based upon what you saw from him in practice last year. That's not your job. Do you think Belichick is happy that his faith in Stidham is being validated before the guy even plays, or do you think Belichick is thinking, wait, this isn't the way we do things? Well, no, I think he, he, he's probably okay with this in this situation. First off, the three guys we're talking about, Gilmore, Slater, McCourty, they're in the trust tree with Bill Belichick. Those are like his guys, ultimate professionals, you know, know how to work and practice and do everything the New England way to a T. You know, the other thing we got to take into account here, Mike, you know, and you brought it up, they're not with the team right now. I think if these comments continued to happen during OTAs and training camp, Belichick would get up there at a team meeting and look at one of them and go, who the hell made you the team spokesman? <laughs> Who the hell told you to have the State of the Union addressed on the evaluation of players? Yes, I think he would even say that to that group. But right now, with the State of the Times and Brady and the panic up in New England, and he can't believe this, I'm sure he's happy to hear some of his trusted players say some positive things about a guy just to, to help the propaganda of the, of the situation behind Jared Stidham a little bit. And, and I don't know if – it's a byproduct of people being so focused on the public health and economic crisis, or maybe people just accepted that it was inevitable, but I really haven't sensed a, a huge negative blowback against the Patriots or against Tom Brady for the fact that no. those two have divorced after 20 years. I, I think everybody can understand that it was an amazing 20 year run. You know, it's, it is business. It's the most cutthroat business in, in our country in a lot of ways, certainly in professional sports, the NFL is. So I think people are able to realize that. And I think anybody who knows football or is paying attention to that could realize, man, it can't be easy playing for Bill Belichick and having that demand and maybe not getting that, you know, joyful respect all the time like you like. And it was a great run. It's the greatest run we've ever seen. It's not even close. And I think New England fans, more than anything, are just appreciative of that. But you're right. It hasn't been a huge blowback. And I think New England fans also saw a little bit, you know, uh, you know, just some, some scratches and, and, and dents in the armor last year with Brady's play to know that, hey, it's getting close to the end anyways. And I think they can understand that from the football standpoint. Yeah, one of the things that really – stunned me in the aftermath of Brady picking the Buccaneers, the report from Vic Tafer of The Athletic, that the Raiders weren't willing to go to $25 million a year because they evaluated the film of the last two seasons and they just didn't think it justified it. And I think that's kind of the, the mirror image of Bill Belichick on the inside, knowing exactly what Brady is currently doing, what he's capable of doing, how he's executing in relation to what his expectations are, what the play expects, how he's how he has 
performed in the past versus how he's performing now. And that that's always been one of Belichick's gifts to to make the decision to move on from somebody one year too early instead of one year too late. And it could be that he's picking the exact right time to move on. Yeah, I I, I think it's fair to, to, to say that for sure. You know, hey, listen, he, he almost did this a long time ago when he drafted Jimmy Garoppolo in the 2014 draft. You know, 2011, 12, 13, they were underwhelming years for Tom Brady. They were not the best year of his career. You know, if if you remember, I got a lot of heat from New England fans at that time for saying, I don't think he's one of the five best quarterbacks in football during that three-year period. Listen, neither did they. They didn't draft Jimmy Garoppolo because they were like, oh, Brady's so awesome and he's going to play six more years. Let's draft a quarterback just to let him sit here and do nothing so we can trade him one day. No, I think they were afraid. He was getting ready to make that move. But then Brady kind of re- resurrected his career really in 2014 after that on to Cincinnati game. And he changed his style of play, became more aggressive. Uh, now, the big thing is to what you're talking about with the Raiders. Yes, you know, I think you could watch. And I said this with New England last year. It was the first year in a long, long time Tom Brady did not win them one game. I didn't come away going, man, if they didn't have Brady, they wouldn't have won that game. There was them one time. They won it through their defense. He didn't make mistakes. And they just played good complimentary football. And I think New England saw that, too. And I think the Raiders probably saw that added to the fact that he's a little unwilling to hold the ball in the pocket. He's not going to move around and make a ton of plays that way at the age of 43. And that probably scared some teams off in the evaluation process. Bill Belichick was never bashful about drafting quarterbacks, even when Tom Brady was the unquestioned starter. And they would use third rounders on guys like Ryan Mallett, third rounder on Jacoby Brissett, second rounder on Jimmy Garoppolo. They right. drafted quarterbacks. It felt like every year. And and I feel like the – and I remember talking to Tom Curran of NBC Sports Boston about this. The drafting of Jimmy Garoppolo pissed Tom Brady off and contributed yeah. to that that second act that – that resulted in a 10-year drought of Super Bowl championships becoming another dynasty where they won three more. I mean, they went with they had three for a decade. And in 2014, the on to Cincinnati year, after that game, next thing you know, they win the Super Bowl that year. They win the Super Bowl two years later. They said they win the Super Bowl two years after that. They've won three. They'd won three in uh, Brady's seasons after 2014. And uh, I think that, that that and I think that's part of why Brady had enough of Bill Belichick. Because sure. there's that constant doubt, that constant that constant poking and prodding to try to get more out of him. You can only take so much of that, Chris. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. But I will say that drafting of Jimmy Garoppolo changed Tom Brady. It made him a better player. You know, there was no threat to him in 2011, 12, 13. You know, he had, hey, the Denver Broncos in the 2013 AFC Championship game decided to stop LeGarrette Blunt and just left pass plays on a silver platter for Tom Brady to hit. And he didn't. So there was issues there. You know, he was one of the worst downfield throwers in football. But to Brady's credit, and this is where Tom Brady is just absolutely amazing, he changed his throwing motion a little bit. He stopped worrying about completion percentage and dink and dunk over the middle. He became more aggressive within the confines of the offense. It opened the offense up more. It made them more dangerous on the offensive side of the ball. And that's where... Yes, it's amazing. I mean, we saw, yes, a a second dynasty run, and a big part of that was because Tom Brady changed his game and and really played at a really high level for the last four or five years. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.